any kind of high-tech rock or metal kind of style. I mean, it's extreme. A lot of it's extremely physical. So it's important, you know, if you aspire to play those types of things, you know, you, your technique has got to be at a certain level. Hi, I'm Matt Marvoglio, Dean of the Professional Performance Division at Berklee College of Music. Welcome to When Music Works. Today, our lesson and topic for discussion is chop building from the shredding guitarist's perspective. Our featured artist and teacher is Joe Stump. Joe Stump is an incredible rock guitarist and an assistant professor in the guitar department. In the lesson today, you will learn how to work with a metronome to increase your speed. You will learn some scales and riffs to develop your solos and also get some great practice tips. Let's get started and see what Joe has to offer. Hey Joe, welcome. Good to see you. You too. So the lesson today is a chop building lesson in how to get your chops together playing some rock guitar. Yes, yes. Um, just some um, basic metronome skills, some tremolo picking stuff. I have this one double picking etude um, and a couple small like exercise-y type things that are that are great to throw in your routine to start working on your hands. Is this for all, all different styles of rock playing or is it specific to one area? Well, I mean, the way I play it and the way that things are set up, it's obviously more, you know, hard rock and, and metal and shred tinge, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, uh, um, practicing intervallic things w mm -hmm. w within scales and like using the metronome and working your um, working that kind of stuff into a practice routine and, and applying that kind of discipline um, is you know is you know that's great for for players of all styles. Players of all styles do that. I mean right. I mean jazz players and fusion players end up playing wider intervallic things as opposed to rock players that are usually working with um, closer intervals. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody should work with a metronome, huh? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I guess a, a lot of people own them, but never really take it, them out. It, exactly. You know, the first step is like, well, do you ha do you own one? <laughs> do you ever turn it on? I right. mean, I, t I, I, you know, my students, um, my students at Berkeley, they'll be working on classical pieces or etudes of mine or whatever, and I'm like, that sounds great. Now, now let's try it with the click. Oh, I didn't practice that with the metronome. Mm -hmm. Don't you hear the metronome going in my room right. when you hear me practicing yeah. constantly? Uh -huh. So you know, sure. Metronome use important. <laughs> and what about the setup uh, when you're practicing uh, I know you're practicing with a metronome and you're practicing with a sound that seems very similar to what you would play in performance yeah exactly I mean I mean when I'm firing up live I have the you know the walls of Marshall stacks and the, uh -huh. and the whole nine yards and everything but obviously it's important to pra it's important to have a good tone when you're practicing and it's extremely important to have you know because obviously that's um, that's going to inspire you to practice. If you have an awful guitar tone, you're not really going to, it's not going to be conducive mm -hmm. to uh, wanting to play. Right. And then obviously one big element of rock guitar is developing the tone and the sound under your hand. So if you're, um, it, it, you really want to practice with as close to a tone mm -hmm. as you would be performing with. Great. And before we get started, uh, what, what do you think we, we need to know to really get the most out of this lesson? Is there certain scales or...? A lot of the stuff is very self-explanatory. I mean, I mean, just quick, I can just kind of run through the, you know, a little primer of the scales used in hard rock and metal. I mean, obviously, what one, the main one I use is the natural minor scale, which mm -hmm. is just um, the pentatonic scale plus a couple extra notes. Sure. I mean, here's A minor pentatonic. <laughs> And the natural minor, you're just adding, you know, a couple right. extra notes to that. And then an another one would be the harmonic minor scale, which is that same scale just with the raised seventh tone, and that's uh -huh. got more of a classical sound, a little bit more evil, mm -hmm. darker sounding. <laughs> I feel more evil and darker all the time. Exactly. <laughs> it, 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 exactly. Just the sound of the scale <laughs> conjures up all kinds of... Uh, <laughs> so in this chop building, it's really based upon not so much the harmonic theory of things or whatever, but really getting your hands together, warming up. Yeah, it's more of a physical up. thing because, I mean, playing um, in the style that I play, 
and um, and any kind of high tech rock or metal kind of style. I mean, it's extreme. A lot of it's extremely physical, so it's important. You know, if you aspire to play those types of things, you know, you, your technique has got to be at a certain level. And there's enough things where, like, some players that are just starting out are going to be able to get something out of it. It's not like too far over their head. And the more advanced players will be able to latch onto the stuff because even though some of it might be pretty simple, I'm playing at a pretty burning tempo. Right. So, so you know, the, the I try to make it a little bit a bit more general mm -hmm. so I wasn't alienating um, either advanced players or you know lower level guys and like the harmonic minor scale you were saying it sounds more classical um, it also sounds like a lot of the, the rock influences are very classical like uh, um, and, and oh violinists yeah. oh yeah exactly I, I mean I mean uh, the whole shredding thing and the whole that whole style of hard rock guitar really stemmed from you know started back in the 70s and um, 70s and early 80s when um, got, um, European players like Richie Blackmore, um, mm -hmm. you know, obviously with Deep Purple and Rainbow, and then Michael and Michael Schenker, um, Gary Moore, Uli John Roth, and then Ingve Malmsteen came around in um, you know 1983 or whatever, and then uh -huh. took it to a whole nother level. And and you know, tons of other players have been using the influences of um, classical classical composers like Bach and Paganini, Vivaldi. Mozart, Beethoven, you know, all different. There, okay. There's the and uh, and other players take things for even more contemporary periods. Mm -hmm. So there's you know there's a huge vocabulary of things mm -hmm. of things out there. So I mean, some of the speeds that you're playing at too are, are quite fast. Do you ever think of fastening yourself in with a seatbelt or anything like that? Ex exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. That's why I wear all this jewelry <laughs> on my hand. So 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 I can actually if I take it all off, I'm going to play so fast that actually human beings won't be able to hear the pitches. <laughs> so that actually holds like you back. <laughs> Exactly, only dogs and like right. certain certain kinds of birds and stuff. <laughs> well, great, I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's get started. All right, cool.
I'm going to talk about some things that I use in my playing. Um, chop building stuff, some cool arpeggio stuff, some alternate and economy picking for the right hand, maybe a few uh, Baroque things, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So uh, let's get started, shall we? All right, so one of the keys to working on one's technique, chops, hands, is the metronome. One thing you got to know how to do is subdivide the beat with the metronome, which is very easy. Um, all you have to have is basic math skills, meaning like I got the metronome clicking at 120 now, and just quarter notes with the metronome. That's one beat for each beat, uh, one note for each beat of the metronome. So that's very, very, very easy. And I'm going to do that inside the A minor scale right here, the guitar-friendly key of A minor. And that's um, just one note per each beat of the metronome, very, very easy quarter notes. Now I'm going to play the scale in eighths, that's two, beat, two notes per each beat of the metronome. Very easy, eighth notes, A minor scale in eighths. Okay, and now I'm going to play the A minor scale. I'm going to change up the fingering, play three notes on each string. Now I'm going to play triplets, three notes for each beat of the metronome. Triplets. And last sixteenths, that's right, four, you guessed it, four notes for each beat of the metronome. So, so there we had quarters eighths, triplets, and sixteenths. So um, I know this is real basic and painful for some of you uh, more advanced players, but for those of you that have never used the metronome before, helpful, beneficial, easy, right? All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tremolo pick each note in the A minor scale four times in sixteenths and this is a really easy easy way to um, develop your right hand and pick up and down starting on a down down up down up so when you go to the next note or the next string cross you're starting on a down again so very easy way to um, unconsciously alternate pick plus another thing that's cool to do is you take a key tonality area of the guitar that you um, are a little unfamiliar with those of you that um, have this down already, and you can use it to reinforce um, reinforce new knowledge of um, newly learned scale fingering or working in a key that you're a little uh, more a little bit more unfamiliar with. So A minor here, banging on each note four times in sixteenths. Painfully easy, but I'm going to do it at like 170, so you know, so I don't fall asleep. Cool. So there it is in 16th, and just so you guys can hear what it sounds like at a little bit slower tempo. I mean, the object is just to play at whatever speed you can play it cleanly at, nice and even. Slower tempo, just... Another cool tremolo picking bit where I'm going to play each note in the scale four times again, tremolo picking in sixteenths. But in this case, I'm going to be I'm going to 
take the guitar friendly key of E minor. And I'm gonna tremolo pick all the way up the E minor scale on one string, banging on each note four times. Go all the way down my B string, banging on each note four times. You guessed it, up the G, down the D. So I'm gonna be playing just about every note on the neck in the key of E minor. And so that's a lot of tremolo picking, a lot of sixteenths. I mean, this is a cool thing to loosen up your right hand, learn the neck better, like I said before. I mean, I wouldn't lock myself away and do nothing but tremolo pick for hours a day, you know, you get suicidal at some point, but this is a cool bit. And, and I mean, those of you that have this stuff down, do it in a key that you're a little, that you play in quite frequently, but um, a little bit less familiar with. I picked E minor because it's guitar friendly key. All right, so next technique I'm going to talk about is double picking, double noting. And what that is, is I'm playing each note in the scale two times in sixteenths. And I'm, I'm going to just do it within the scale first, and then I'll play a couple cool e exercises. And then I'll play our very first etude that I'm going to play, which is a double picking etude, which is a favorite bit of mine, an excerpt from a track. Double noting, double picking, like I said, two notes at a time in sixteenths. You find that in um, classical music. Um, the um, Bach's Brandenburg Concerto, that's got some double noting in it. The Bandier, a bunch of Bach pieces, and some other classical composers use the double noting. And um, as well as uh, some of the old school European traditional hard rock guitar masters, the guys that really influenced me. One of my favorite guys is Gary Moore, um, Irish guitar player who was more of um, a hard rock guitar player, metal guitar player. Um, in the 80s, and now he's more of a blues guy, but tremendous play and great tone, great technique, great vibe, great feel, so, you know, and a big influence on me, and he used his technique quite a bit. But, um, but started out just doing it within the A minor scale. Now, if I was playing eighths within the A minor scale, it'd just be, you know, which, you know, you can do, but the double picking is going to be two notes at a time, but in sixteenths. And that's just right up A minor, but you can, you know, I'm using A minor because it's a very common key and um hard rock and um, metal shred, whatever you want to call that nonsense. And, um, and also, very, um, also it's a key relative to C major, a key that everybody, scale and key that everybody should know. If you don't know it, now you know it. Once again, slow with the A minor fingering, but you can finger the scale many different ways. You know. <laughs> like that, or, you know, playing the B up here. You know, three notes per string. But, um, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll use, as far as a minor scale, harmonic minor scale, whatever scales I'm using, depending on the lick, sequence, pattern, idea I'm playing, or whatever, I'll use different scale fingerings. That's why it's great to learn different scale fingerings. Not because, you know, to pay the bills of like some guy that's ripping you off for lessons, but um, because it helps you learn the instrument better, helps you learn the neck better. Also, um, certain licks, certain ideas, certain passages are conducive to um, certain types of left-hand shapes, left-hand fingerings. But anyway, back to the double-picking biz. And you guys heard that already. You know. like that. And um, now I'm going to take this little E harmonic minor passage, which is cool, and I'm going to double pick it. First of all, I'll play the passage slow. It's Like 
that, and that's just a combination of a couple diatonic scale patterns. Diatonic scale patterns meaning diatonic, meaning within the scale, and a pattern meaning I'm just playing a co combination of a couple different patterns, just moving up the scale with a three note pickup, four notes at a time. <laughs> And then going down in thirds. And even without the double picking, that's a cool little passage to play. Once again, only one string crossing, Bob, so it's really easy and sounds cool too. I'm going to double pick that same passage, so now I'm going to, going to be banging on each note two times in sixteenths. You know, like that, but obviously twice as fast, that was eighths. Something like this. So, there's a, another cool bit to practice. Once again, all easy stuff. Easy, easy stuff. Now we'll get to the um, first, a little bit more complicated thing I'm going to play. Now this is a double picking etude that, I, that I've composed. And um, I'm going to blow through it slow and explain it. And then I'll play it, you know, at speed. Um, first of all, the chords, D minor. Um, B flat major. C major. Another climb is going to be A major, B flat major, C major, and A with C sharp in the bass. A chord that no younger guy seemed to know for any reason. I play this chord in like some of my master classes, lessons, labs, and they say, what chord is that, you know? And all it is is um, obviously triad. You got three notes in the triad, hence the term tri, right? And all and different notes in the triad can take turns being in the bass, and in this case you got the third in the bass, so it gives you, you know, a little bit of different sound. There's the little A major triad, and there's a C sharp in the bass. Once again, very easy. Another easy way to play it. There's the A major with the nut, like that. And uh, just so you guys get an idea of what the groove is like behind this double picking, it sounds like this. A fierce Euro metal groove. So that's what the chords are doing. And now we'll get to the um, we'll get to the etude. And I'll, maybe later on I'll break that chord thing down because I'm playing the, you know playing the chords and I'm playing some cool sixteenth note fills. So if you're interested in that? I'll break that down slow for you guys. All right, cool. So the first thing now what I'm doing here with the double picking bit is I'm outlining the chords. Um, and so this is also cool. First of all, it's great for your right hand. Outlining these triadic shapes that are that you know so help you learn the triads good on the neck. So it starts like this very slowly. It's Like that, and there's my D minor triad. And then I'm just, excuse me, add this. That in there. Then I go to B flat major. B flat triad. Then C major, same thing, two, two frets higher. And then the climb is. A major, C major, and then C sharp diminished, and I'm using the C sharp diminished over the A with C sharp in the bass, very cool sound, but um, 
theoretically works really nice because the C sharp diminished almost the same as an A dominant seventh chord. But I don't want to get into the deep theory end of it. We're talking more about just technique and building up your chops. So that little bit in time fast sounds like this. Then it continues. Now next time through, D minor, triad right there. So I'm going. And then B flat major. And then C major right there. Then I'm doing a little sweep thing, A major. B flat major, C major, C sharp diminished. All right, so those first two set, and then so you get that G minor triad there, B flat major triad there, C major triad there, and then the climb. And the picking pattern on the sweep, we'll have a whole arpeggio section of, of this bit, but just for now, the picking pattern on the sweep is down, 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 up, pull, up, up. Very standard way to play that sweep. Down, 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 up, pull, up, up. And for each shape. First two sections sound like this. Now the last section, chord sequence once again, now I'm up here in fifth position, D minor triad. B flat major. C major. Then the climb. So there's the A right there. B flat major. Just part of that chord. C major. Just part of that chord. And then that C sharp diminished again. And that section fast sounds like this. You can see fierce metal, but great for your right hand. Cool because you're picking up and down. Another reason this is a fun thing to play, and an, um, another reason I started with it is because you don't have to kill yourself. You know, those of you guys that are just getting into some of these things, and your right hand isn't all that developed yet, you can still play it. It sounds cool, and you don't have to kill yourself technically. Maybe not to play it at you know the speed I'm playing it at 160, but um, you know, still sounds very cool at a slower tempo as well. So the whole, whole bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, cool. Now I'm going to play a track for you. This is uh, the first track off the Supersonic Shred Machine album, and I know you all have that one. So, um, so you're going to be familiar with this track, <laughs> The Lovely Demon's Eye. <laughs> this is the first track on the record. And um, when I play this, when I, um, when I play this, I'm going to combine a bunch of those techniques we talked about um, earlier in the bit. So um, listen for them. You'll hear them. That and a host of other things, I'm sure. So uh, check it out.
Thanks. Um, see ya. Hope you enjoyed it. I did. Cool. Well, Joe, that's quite impressive. You know, that's a quite impressive lesson. So, how, you know, how long did it take you to get that kind of technique working with the metronome? Because there's a lot of push and pull. There's a there's a lot of you know expression to it. Well, I mean, it, it, I mean, I still to play in this style, you have to um, you really have to love to practice because it mm -hmm. requires a huge amount of maintenance. It's like a a guy that's a great athlete. He can't all of a sudden decide. You know, he um, he's going to go to McDonald's and you know eat six Big Macs and wash <laughs> it down with some tequila, and then and then you know he's going to play a game on Sunday in the NFL. You know, it's a constant, it's constant upkeep as far as um, you know, always practicing, always work, working on my hands. So I mean, I've been practicing quite a bit um, since I was young, and continue to practice anywhere between three, five, six hours a day. And it's um, well, a lot of time. Is yeah. There, is there any issues like tendonitis issues? I mean, it, it seems like you're playing very loose, very light. So yeah. Well, well, I mean, one of the things that a lot of younger players tend to do is is they'll if they're if playing something that's challenging, they'll tend to tense up. And so obviously, when you're tensing up, if I, you know, if if you're tensing up this hand, how efficient can you be? Right. You know, so so tensing up leads to hand problems. The other thing with um tensing up is it's a matter of energy versus efficiency if you have your motion nice and economized when you're playing then um you know, have your motion not, you're using a lot less energy uh -huh. where where you know the the more motion less energy the lower your endurance is going to be the more you hurt yourself yeah and, that, and then you're you know open mm -hmm. opening yourself up to possible injury and all that kind of stuff but as i was as we were saying before, you know, it's, it's quite apparent that the influences, I mean, I'm hearing like Paganini licks, you know, from like the different caprices or similar things oh, to yeah, that, yeah, and yeah, even no, like no. Brandenburg sequences. And yeah, no, I played a lot of that stu stuff, and I actually just started, I played a lot of that stuff when I was younger, and, and I'll, um, I'll, pl I'll play... Um, I'll play cla violin pieces now just because I, I compose and write everything, you know, for various, for my various recordings myself. And then you kind of get out of the vibe of playing something that was composed by somebody else. What, right. Where some of my stuff is very technical, technically demanding, it's still, since I composed it, it's, got, it's mm -hmm. different than actually playing, you know, a, a piece of box or a piece right. of Paganini's or whatever. And right. I t take up excerpts from those things and put them in my tunes. Could you just play a couple of excerpts for us? I mean, I'd like to hear like a Paganini thing on this. You know, yeah. like that's just that's just from twenty. That's just a little bit from twenty four. You know, when they yeah, get the. Right. You know, like the yeah, little no, bit, a little bit great. of five or whatever. <laughs> just a little bit of five. And a little, How a about little good old number seven. <laughs> number seven. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're, they're so hard. Like, like oh, I've yeah. played like on, on my on my new um or my newest record. Um, I actually played a, a um starts out with a six minute guitar solo, and um and some of that some of that's actually at the, at the top of the video where I'm playing by the cadenza by myself. But I play like a portion of five, and it's just yeah, and even just a small portion of it, and I'm playing it. A tad like Itzhak Perlman's probably playing it close to 170, uh -huh. you know, or Elliot Fisk, and I'm playing it like probably in the 150s in in this tri you know, the mm -hmm. midst of the track, and it's you know, it's so hard, and I'm only right. playing an excerpt of it, like uh -huh. I said. Yeah, that's great. Any other tips about practicing or anything before we? Um, well, well, one good one good piece of advice, gem of wisdom, <laughs> for everybody is um uh, I mean obviously rock, rock guitar is all about um you know just picking the thing up and vibing out and rocking out and um and you know so you want to have some of your uh, some of your practice routine like freed up like that where mm -hmm. it's not you know you know not like you're getting hit on the knuckles with a ruler or right. whatever but if you you also want to mix it with some of the discipline type things that we talked about today so if you can kind of balance the two it works out really nicely you know not not just like this gr it, it's great to jam along with CDs or lift solos by your favorite players or you know put on a groove and just start playing or compose things mm -hmm. or whatever and and just sit there vibe out and rock out work on your tone or whatever but it's also you know to have a it's also important to have a disciplined approach to practice right. working on, working with the metronome all those types of things that's great advice well thank you very much it was a great lesson all right and, cool uh, take care all right